Welcome back to Behind the Scenes. This is Lisa Condon. I'm here with Don Phipps, and everybody, Don Phipps is the man behind our organ. Don has been involved with us since before our theater opened, and it's because of his generosity that we have New England's largest theater pipe organ. Don, welcome to our program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Don, you have so much history and so much expertise wrapped up in what you do, and we're so fortunate to have you. You know, you've been a major supporter of the theater. You had your recent birthday party at the theater. You're the one that's turned us on to our organists that have come to play this beautiful instrument. Tell us a little bit about how you really got started with collecting and working on organs. Well, my interest in pipe organs actually goes back to when I was five years old. Uh, an aunt of mine uh, lived in Boston, took me to Tremont Temple Baptist Church, and there was this huge Cassavant pipe organ, and I came out of there with my eyes looking like saucers, and I came home and I told my mother that someday I was going to be organist of Tremont Temple. Well, actually, we kept it in the family because at one time my brother was assistant organist of Tem Tremont Temple. Unfortunately, the one uh, thing that was lacking as far as my aspirations went uh, was the fact that I had no talent when it came to playing the organ. But I've had 64 wonderful years of working with pipe organ. Uh, first, initially, as a business, when I started an apprenticeship building church organs at Aeoli and Skinner. And then, though, realizing that a job that back in those days paid the magnificent uh, sum of 80 cents an hour, Ooh. it might be better to go back to college, uh, learn engineering, and keep organs as a hobby, which I did until I retired at the age of 58. And then I had the chance to get back to my first love and pursue it full time ever since. This really is a labor of love. And, you know, you mentioned your brother. You have a whole team that I refer to as Don's posse, your organ posse. You want to give a little bit of a shout-out to the other people who really help you with the, the organ at the Hanover Theater? Well, we have a wonderful uh, crew here. Uh, actually, there are four main workers, uh, my brother John, uh, Len Beiersdorfer, who's also the very talented resident organist of the Hanover Theater, and uh, also Bruce Hager. So we, uh, we have a group that's very uh, devoted to this project. Oh, you are the sweetest group of men I think I have ever met in my life. And you come and you work at the Hanover Theater regularly. We always see you there. When did that really start? When did you know that you were going to be able to work with us and you were going to be able to install our organ? Well, actually, uh, I started upon retirement to build uh, what I hoped to be uh, my uh, major opus, uh, a large theater pipe organ. I'd collected parts for about 50 years, but following business and earning a living and raising a family and all. I really didn't have the opportunity to realize this dream until retirement. At that point, I started on a six and a half year project to utilize the parts I'd collected to rebuild them, restore them, and assemble them into an organ, a four manual organ of uh, 32 sets of pipes. However, seeing the years go by, uh, I began to think of the time when uh, the organ would need a new home. And at that time, I started to look for a suitable home. Uh, I found, in reality, that um, uh, finding the home was much more difficult uh, than uh, building the organ. And actually, I had just about given up when it was my privilege to meet Troy Stebels and uh, become involved with the Hanover Theater uh, and uh, start this project. And so what did Troy say to you? He is one of the most approachable people anybody will ever meet. What did he say to you? Well, I had made a cold call to Troy, and uh, I said, I understand from what I've read in the newspapers that you're uh, uh, restoring and reopening a theater, 
you have a theater. I have a large theater pipe organ. Uh, maybe we should get together. A week later, I met him at the Shanklin Music Hall in Groton, where there was a large uh, Wurlitzer organ that I had been involved with in the installation thereof. And uh, we demonstrated the organ, and Troy said, well, sounds great. I wonder if we have room for it. Well, I thought things would just sort of go along. And much to my joy and surprise, uh, a week later, there were some architects drawings in my mailbox uh, of the uh, sort of the large scale drawings of the building and uh, I determined that there was uh, um, space available to install the organ and it was then that we agreed to start this project uh, to show the caliber of people that I've been dealing with at the Hanover Theater the only thing that exists in any sort of a document uh, regarding the gift of this organ as a handshake with Troy and myself. That's the only thing in writing, mm. and that isn't in writing. We're going to take a short break and then come back and continue our conversation with Don Phipps, so stay tuned to Behind the Scenes on WCRN AM 830. We are continuing our conversation with Don Phipps. Now, I remember discussions early on about the organ, and one of the potential sticking points was the lift. People might not realize that you need an organ lift. Do you want to tell people what I mean by that? Uh, yes, uh, this is very true. Uh, most of the larger and notable theaters uh, have the console of the organ installed in the orchestra pit. And, of course, the orchestra pit, most of the time, in the old days, was used uh, to, for the orchestra. Uh, when the organ was needed, the organ would majestically rise out of the pit uh, on an elevator up to stage level where it could be played and then it would sink out of view. This had to be, uh, uh, this lift uh, was uh, ordered, purchased. Uh, the lift installed, as I recall, was $40,000. Uh, it will uh, lift a, a total of three tons uh, to a height of ten and a half feet above the floor of the orchestra pit. And, you know, if you've been to one of our shows and you've seen one of the pre-organ performances, you know what we're talking about as far as the organ lifting up on this elevator to stage level. You also see it in A Christmas Carol. And... Oh, I remember the opening scenes of A Christmas Carol when the organ descends into the orchestra pit and the whole stage is dark. It's very dramatic. You still hear the organ music, but it really does add something and a richness to the whole experience that without your help, we never would have realized. Well, it's what I refer to as a synergistic situation. Uh, the um, Hanover Theater had the space, had the facilities to house the organ. I had the instrument, and uh, I like to think it was a marriage made in heaven. Absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, certainly my golden years have been tremendously enriched by this project. Oh, and we have really enjoyed working with you, that is for sure. And so we have a whole new series that... We started last year, and we're really continuing with this year, and that's our silent movie series. And you've really been instrumental in bringing this project for, forward for all of us, you know, and letting us know that this is a really popular, cool thing. And it's really starting to catch on. You're also the person that turned us on to Clark Wilson. How did you meet Clark Wilson? Well, there's a national organization uh, known as the American Theater Organ Society, uh, currently, I have the privilege of being on the board of directors, but it's uh, uh, made up of people that love the theater organ, love the art form, and of course, uh, we must never forget that uh, the whole reason for being of the theater pipe organ was to uh, accompany silent motion pictures. Uh, I've known Clark uh, for a number of years and have... Uh, done projects with him. Uh, it's not generally known uh, because uh, Clark is primarily regarded as an extremely talented organist and motion picture accompaniment. Uh, 
uh, but he's also a noted organ architect, uh, an engineer that's capable of designing and doing the tonal finishing for the theater pipe organ, and I hired him to uh, tonally finish the organ at the Hanover, hmm. and I've also worked with him on other projects. He's a wonderfully talented individual. He not only plays well, um, but he's very knowledgeable when it comes to every aspect of theater pipe organs. Well, and you've touched on something, and that is the very technical part of this instrument. And I don't think that we can really underscore that enough. If you want to just tell people a little bit about how does the organ work? You have your console. What happens? Well, most people uh, think that the entire instrument is the console. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, actually, the console is just uh, the tip of the instrument or the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Uh, to give you some idea, uh, the organ in the Hanover has 35 sets of pipes, totaling 2,495 pipes. There are seven tuned percussions, actually uh, tuned uh, musical instruments with a total of 307 notes. There's also many other traps and effects like drums, cymbals, and so forth. Uh, there's a full-size piano that's controlled from the organ. Uh, it's actually a wind instrument. It's, uh, the sounds are all generated uh, by pipes that are blown by wind. And to give you some idea, uh, in the sub-basement of the Hanover Theater, there's a 30-horsepower blower, weighs 1,200 pounds. It develops up to 5,000 cubic feet of air a minute. Uh, this air is distributed through two 14-inch sheet metal lines through the chambers on either side of the proscenium arch. And up there, there is actually 17 tons of mechanism. Because wow. every one of the pipes has to be controlled. They're electrically controlled. Uh, the only modern aspect of this instrument is the organ has been modernized, even though most of the components were built between 1920 and 1930. The actual control system is done with a PC and 50-some assorted uh, printed circuit boards that control each individual pipe, each individual instrument, and each uh, function that's necessary. That is incredible. And so you, you mentioned final tuning. What does that mean to tune an instrument with all of these pipes, all of these components? Well, the tuning is more of an ongoing uh, maintenance factor. Uh, perhaps I used a poor choice of words, but the tonal finishing consists of a much uh, uh, more highly skilled uh, adjustment of the organ. Each pipe is adjusted to have the right speech or sound, the right volume, and the right pitch. Uh, the tuning uh, is primarily accomplished, of course, uh, these being basically air whistles by changing the mechanical length of the individual pipes. That is completely incredible. What a labor of love, Don. Well, it has been a labor of love. And of course, what few people realize is that pipe organs are extremely labor intensive. Uh, to give you some idea of this, uh, there was a total of 10,000 hours spent in the initial assembly of the organ in my shop over a six and a half year period. Wow. Uh, once we moved uh, the instrument to the Hanover, uh, our crew so far has worked uh, 1,500 man days. And granted, some of us are getting a little old, a little long in the tooth, so the man days can sometimes be six hours, seven hours, eight hours. But there's 10,000 hours probably of labor gone on just with the installation alone. The energy and dedication is unbelievable. 
with you and your team and making sure that A, this theater organ ended up at the Hanover Theater, B, that it was set up, and C, that it's maintained. And that brings us to, yes, you recently had a birthday party at the Hanover Theater, and we now have an organ fund so that in the future, we can make sure that this instrument is maintained. And, you know, you just mentioned a thousand man days. That's not even man hours. That's incredible. And so if we had to pay in order to have our organ maintained, how much do you think that it would cost to pay an outside service every year? Well, now that the organ has been totally rebuilt, uh, probably the maintenance tuning which should more or less be what's uh, necessary each year, uh, would uh, probably in, uh, involve uh, oh, maybe $2,000 a year. Wow. That really is not, in the whole scheme of things, a lot of money. So that means that when people donate to the organ fund, really donations of any size are welcome because we're trying to really get to that $2,000 level, right? Uh, well, this is true. Uh, uh, the organ uh, ha uh, should be good for maybe 40 years uh, without needing a major overhaul. Uh, but um, the one advantage of starting with something that has been totally uh, rebuilt is the fact that hopefully uh, barring roof leaks or some mm -hmm. other catastrophe, uh, the organ uh, can continue to run reliably for a goodly number of years without further major expense. Right. Now, you and Clark are going to be a part of our Access Hanover Lyceum Series event before we see Safety Last coming up this month, January 26. What can people expect to hear from you and from Clark? Well, uh, Clark is a wonderful uh, uh, speaker. Uh, on the various as aspects of his expertise. And uh, uh, I will be there, one, uh, to introduce Clark, and secondly, if uh, uh, there are anyone has any questions uh, having to do with the specifics of the Hanover Wurlitzer, it would be my pleasure to answer them. There will also be an opportunity to uh, take questions from the audience in the time uh, between the end of the Lyceum series and the actual start of the moving picture. Oh, this is going to be a great event. It's going to be a great day at the Hanover Theater. Thank you, Don, for all that you do for us, for the city of Worcester, for the organ community. Thank you for bringing organ lovers right here to central Massachusetts and for really leading the charge so that we can continue to spread the joy that this instrument can play. Well, I assure you the pleasure has been all mine. Thank you.